as we've seen with almost all recent Google hardware, plenty of tidbits, snippets and information is coming to light way ahead of any proposed launch for the next flagship Pixel devices. Although it's fairly early, we've been sifting through the growing pile of Google Pixel 6 rumors, and here's everything we currently know. Today's video is sponsored by NVIDIA GeForce Now, the cloud gaming platform that can effectively transform any laptop, desktop, Chromebook, smartphone or tablet into a gaming rig without needing to go and build a PC from scratch. GeForce Now lets you access your existing game libraries from Steam, Epic Games and more, meaning you can enjoy some of your favorite titles seamlessly across all of your hardware. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about how GeForce Now can get you gaming on every device you own. You might be wondering why we said currently no, because as with all product release cycles, it's tough to be 100% certain just what is coming. But that said, even at this early stage, we're lucky enough to even have a faint idea of what the Pixel 6 series might provide. So we're going to lay out all of the information on the table so that you have a better understanding of what these devices might bring to the table. While previous years were easy to decipher and understand, let's file the Made by Google 2020 lineup under confusing and a little bit convoluted. Things are returning to organized and clear for 2021, at least with regard to the flagship Pixel 6 series. There will be two smartphones, the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro, which could be XL, but the Pro naming convention has been touted at this stage. Alongside the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro, the 5A 5G will complete the lineup for late 2021. This is infinitely more streamlined than last year. At least we know the flagship Pixel 6 will come in two distinct flavors, with a mid-range Pixel 5a 5G also available to pick up if you don't want a flagship device. It's still odd, but it's not as odd as having a mid-range flagship Pixel 5 that is technically just as powerful as the Pixel 4a 5G. So hopefully this is a little bit clearer for you out there. As is often the case, everything points towards two distinct device sizes for the Pixel 6 series and courtesy of leaks, we at least know the dimensions. We're still not sure if the larger Pixel 6 will be called the Pixel 6 Pro as we mentioned, but it is the larger of the duo. The Pixel 6 will be similar in size to that of the Pixel 3 XL, that's about the closest relative, while the Pro will be the largest Pixel to date. As for dimensions, the Pixel 6 will measure 158.6mm tall, 74.8mm wide, and 8.9 millimeters thick. The Pixel 6 Pro will measure 163.9 millimeters tall, 75.8 millimeters wide, and 8.9 millimeters thick. Those dimensions might not be that easily decipherable to many of you out there, but in simple terms, this equates to a 6.4 inch display on the Pixel 6, while the Pixel 6 Pro will pack in a 6.67 inch display. In 2020, we saw lots of complaints about the lack of a large flagship Pixel in 2021, it looks like large is the name of the game with regards to the entire Pixel 6 series and that Mammoth Pro model too. After a few years of experimentation, the 6 and 6 Pro look as though they will pay homage to the classic two-tone Pixel series aesthetic and even a nod to the Nexus 6P's old visor rear camera bump. The result is something quite dramatically different, but with a very faint hint of the original flavoring thrown in. We're not sure of the color options, but early renders have showcased a red, black and white scheme that is certainly or will certainly be eye-catching if it turns out to be a true representation of what will be arriving later this fall. Glass and metal appear to be returning, laying waste to the bioresin finish atop an aluminium chassis found on the Pixel 5 series. It also looks like the upper left Squircle camera bump has been ditched in favour of a kind of Galaxy S10-like visor for the first time since the Nexus 6P, as we mentioned, although it is being moved down the body. This raised portion of the rear panel will host all of the camera lenses plus an LED flash with soft curves into the side seams of that chassis. At the front, the Pixel 6, as we mentioned, looks set to sport a flat 6.4 inch AMOLED display, while the 6.67 inch display on the Pixel 6 Pro will include curved edges. That's not all though, as the punch hole notch is also set to move from the upper left to a centrally placed home at the upper reaches of the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro displays. You might also notice that there is no rear-placed fingerprint scanner in any of the renders shown, which also hints that we might see an in-display fingerprint scanner on the Pixel series for the first time with these two devices. Everything we currently know about the Pixel 6 series was effectively or effectively began with the chipset. It stands to reason that the usage of a custom Whitechapel chip made for Google by Samsung is going to be one of the biggest talking points of the upcoming Pixel series. Undoubtedly, this is a great move, but before we all get too excited, 
It looks as though the GS101 chip inside the Pixel 6 won't be quite as powerful as some of you out there may hope. The earliest rumours suggest that the chip we have come to know as GS101 would feature a three cluster design with two Cortex-A78 cores, two Cortex-A76 cores and four Cortex-A55 cores. Despite Whitechapel's strong relationship to Exynos, there aren't actually any Exynos chips that do match this design. Early estimates suggest that the Whitechapel chip would offer a performance level similar to that of the Pixel 5's Snapdragon 765G, but other newer reports have suggested that PVT units are achieving performance levels closer to that of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 870. If this is true, this would put the GS101 chip way above the Pixel 5 and the decidedly mid-range Snapdragon 765G processor. That said, it would still lag behind the Snapdragon 888, which is the latest chipset in 2021, found in the likes of the Galaxy S21 and the OnePlus 9 series. On the graphics side of things, the GS101 chip will use a GPU based upon ARM's Valhall architecture. So far, only a handful of GPUs have been announced with the Valhall design, including the high-end Mali G77 and Mali G78 GPUs, as well as a new mid-range Mali G68. This would make quite a significant shift from the norm in the US, as many phones built with Snapdragon chips, including Google's own Pixel series, use Qualcomm's internally developed Adreno GPUs. Often this is to major performance benefits, as the Adreno series typically has performed better than its Mali alternatives. While this has historically been the case, the gap has been closed somewhat in recent years. Benchmarks comparing the Exynos and Snapdragon versions of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, the Snapdragon 888's Adreno 660, and the Exynos 2100's Mali G78 show that the GPUs offer almost identical real-world performance. This does mean that there is little cause for concern, at least from a performance perspective, for the Pixel 6 series. So we know the chipset, but what about those other specifications? Well, unfortunately, there, this is where we get into the murky realm of speculation. That said, we have gleaned some information about a couple of potential Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro features, which hints at a wider hardware or some wider hardware improvements. Wireless charging has always been a mainstay of the Pixel series, at least since the release of the Pixel 3 and 3 XL back in 2018. This also saw the launch of the first Pixel stand. Courtesy of Android 12 Beta 2, we found that Google is working on a new Pixel stand that will include a fan for cooling. That alone isn't really that noteworthy, but this does potentially imply that this new Qi charger will provide cooling which is required when charging at faster charge speeds. A classic example of this is the 50 watt wireless warp charger that is used by the OnePlus 9 Pro. It requires a fan to ensure that the back of your device stays cool when topping up at such speeds. It's not exactly proof that the Pixel 6 series will support faster wireless charging speeds than 10 watts, but it does hint that higher wattage speeds may be possible with this new charging dock. Given everything we already know about previous Pixel devices and their internals and the incremental updates with each release, it would be fairly safe to assume that the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro will have at least 6GB of RAM. The Pixel 5 did ship with 8GB of RAM, which could be another good barometer of what the Pixel 6 series will bring to the table. The Pixel 5 was also the first made by Google smartphone to break that 4000 mAh battery barrier, so we're also hopeful that both devices will at least match or exceed this capacity. Battery longevity has often been a sore point, but the efforts with the previous Pixel and the A series has proven that Google is capable of making devices that will last all day. We all know that the Sony IMX363 that the Pixel series has relied on since 2018 is now a little long in the tooth, and we'd love to tell you that a newer sensor is set to be slapped inside the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, but at this stage, we simply don't know. However, the leaked renders hint that we might see some upgrades to the optics of the upcoming Duo. It's not entirely clear, but the early renders hint at two slightly different camera setups on the 6 and 6 Pro respectively. This would kind of mimic how Apple approaches camera setups in their iPhone series, and so it's not new, at least in the smartphone space. That said, the Pixel 6 may come sporting a dual camera setup at the rear, whereas the Pixel 6 Pro may gain an extra lens for a triple camera setup. Breaking it down, it would be fair to suggest that both devices will include a main wide and ultra wide, as seen on the Pixel 4a 5G and the Pixel 5. The renders of the Pixel 6 Pro, when zoomed in, show what looks very much like a rectangular shaped periscope style zoom lens too. This would be a huge introduction, but it is still worth noting that none of these details are yet confirmed. What we do know though, is that the selfie camera will be capable of recording 4K UHD at 60 FPS for the first time, which also hints at some tweaks to the front facing camera. 
For reference, 8.3 megapixels is required for video to be rated at 4K UHD. Usually Google's best Android phone of the year releases in the fall as part of a larger made by Google launch event. While most Pixel phone events have happened in early October, last year's launch night in featured the Pixel 5 and actually took place on September 30th. Following this formal announcement, it took a further two weeks after the official reveal for Pixel 5 devices to begin reaching customers in selected regions before a wider release in late October for other regions. For now, there's no way to truly nail down the reveal date or release date of the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, but leaning on tradition sometime in October would be a pretty safe bet. Again, at this early stage, we simply have no idea of what to expect with regard to Pixel 6 pricing. We've seen prices fluctuate based upon previous years, with the Pixel 5 being fairly cheap at $699 or £599, compared to the $799 Pixel 4 and $899 Pixel 4 XL. However, considering that this is a return to the previous little and large device release, and of course being a proper flagship, we would imagine that the Pixel 6 prices will be roughly in and around the same ballpark as the Pixel 4 series, if not a little higher, which is probably more likely. That said, it's tough to say as we simply don't know for certain, even at this stage. Of course, it feels like a long time away, but the late 2021 made by Google launch event will come around quickly and hopefully this rundown has helped answer a few of your early questions. Although what would you like to see from the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro? Be sure to let us know down in the comments section below. And as always, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later. 9to5Google is sponsored by NVIDIA GeForce Now, which lets you play PC games completely free in the cloud across all of your devices. Or you can join the paid for subscription tier to get access to RTX graphics featuring the latest ray tracing technology, longer gaming sessions and better overall performance. If you want to learn more, then head to the link in the description or check out NVIDIA's GeForce Now Thursdays, which celebrate and highlight the latest releases, news and all things cloud gaming each and every week. And thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring 9to5Google here on YouTube.